What's up guys, this is Mike Loris with another pub game. This time it wasn't sent in by anyone, it was actually a game that I have found by diving through the depths of the Dota 2 replays, and I have come up with this one. I do not know what happens, I just know that I looked at the timer and it seemed to be a pretty long game, and I looked at the final kill score and it seemed to be pretty even. I don't know who wins though, so that could be pretty interesting. Uh, it's actually really hard to find just some like random low-level pub game. Just because if you filter everything by normal difficulty, all the games for some reason are like less than 10 minutes. They're like 1 minute and 30 seconds, stuff like that. I'm guessing that's because people just leave. I don't know exactly why that is, but it seems kind of weird. Either way, this is just going to be a episode of, hopefully, a uh, hilarious, uh, hilarious, horribleness of pub games. I don't, I'm pretty sure this is low level. I am like 80% sure, and judging by the way they're laning it, I think I'm right. <laughs> uh, let's just go over who's playing what first before we get any of this underway. We have Chizu, 89 on the Tusk, EJ Morales, 284, playing that TA, the classic TA Tusk combination in the bottom lane. Dagwolf, playing that Tide in the solo mid position, Jer Sonic, well, I mean, the Dire of Cancer Lancer, so how bad could the game really be, right? Uh, Jav Javin... J. Vincesso, I'm assuming that's Italian. J. Vincesso, gonna be playing the Warlock up top. That's the, gonna be it for the Dire. On the Radiant side, we have Psychonautical, that's actually a pretty cool name on the Nyx Assassin. Following up with Subata, playing the Darks here, also top. Doc is on the uh, Viper. The bottom lane, it is Homicide. Homicide. How, how, I can't. Man, whenever they're moving, it's like really hard to read names because like on the screen it's really horrible. How on the side, okay? Playing the Night Stalker, dual lane with the Rock says, and the Rock says, know your role because Easy Morales certainly always oh, manning up. He wants blood on Homicide, and he's not gonna get it. The Rock says. Know your damn role, EJ Morales. And now, even Cheese is in a little bit of trouble. They're burning through so much mana, but they already got a first blood, so they're not gonna have a care in the world. You know, at least both teams have a courier. Uh, it's a good sign. I mean, this one... Wow, did you... I never noticed that. The couriers are different on the Radiant and Dire. Like, the default ones is like a little gray courier. This one's a... Wow. Has that always been like that? I feel stupid now. I feel like that shouldn't be the thing, but... Anyway, uh, already the game not going too well for the Dire, because they're getting dove once again. Honicide wants more. He's eating way too many tower shots, and... Oh, come on, EJ Morales! Just hit him! One hit, okay, now he wants to do it. Starting off with the boots and tango. That, ironically, those boots is what's going to let him, you know, pick off this Night Stalker, unless he gets juked out. Chisu, just punch him, punch him. Han uh, EJ Morales has the uh, boots. Yeah, there you go. They can even go for the rock, says, but he doesn't really want to use your fraction. Chisu's taking one too many shots. They actually might be able to do it if they just stand and fight, but still without using their refraction. I don't know why you would... Oh, yeah, now taking a tower shot. That's actually going to... Oh, no, he finally used the refraction. Wow, there's some really, really aggressive pro shit going on in this bottom lane. I don't know what's happening on the other lanes, but I don't really care at this point. Honicide, go get him. You need one nuke. You are not as fast. You're not going to catch him. That's unfortunate. Oh, well. EJ Morales turning around. He wants to eat the nuke. There's a fraction, though. Level 1 point of mana leak, actually. Wow, how's the rock? Says, already level 3. What is going on with this bottom lane? <laughs> okay, so... Already the bottom lane for the Radiant, not doing too badly, but uh, I have some tips for EJ Morales. Use Refraction, and there's no reason to really go that turbo-aggressive uh, from the get-go. It's probably not going to be to your advantage. We'll see how this bottom lane shapes up, but in the meantime, let's take a look at, uh, just for a second at the other two lanes. We have Tidehunter going for what I would say a rather correct attack. skill build uh, versus the Viper. I don't know if this, this was intentional or if this is what he does every game, but either way, getting some Anchor Smash, maybe one point in Kraken Shell by level 6 would be a pretty good pickup, so you might be able to dispel some of that Viper Strike damage. Uh, I, that's what I would do, personally, but going for the Magic Wand first uh, is pretty much not what you want to do against Viper. Unfortunately, Magic Wand, Magic Stick do not get filled up due to poison attacks, so that what magic wand unless we have some early rotation is gonna stay at zero charges until viper gets to level six and then you get one charge because of viper strike and and that's about it so this is pretty much a 100 percent waste of gold for the tide hunter would much rather see this be a bottle or something that will allow him to push the viper out of the lane i mean viper geared up rather decently you don't really need to go for a fast bottle as viper 
just because you don't have the mana to do to do anything super aggressive. Oh, EJ Morales still going. They want this Night Stalker dead, and you know the TA is gonna make sure that that's definitely not the case because she's only level two, and uh, they're starting to get out leveled pretty hard. Homicide gonna go for Chisu. There's another void, but do you do you want to dive the tower? Wow. This TA really has got to just like pull it back just a little bit because I think she's a little bit too over aggressive. Uh, but yeah, the Viper's going for a decent build, pretty regeneration heavy. But I, I, if I was him, I would expect the TA or the Warlock to be mid. So you know, fair enough getting these uh, Tangos. I would say Viper playing a solid build uh, all around, except for the fact that there's no third point in poison attack. You need that third point in poison attack. That is pretty much the most important level for Viper, aside from level six. But uh, putting that third point in poison attack gives the poison attack a zero second cooldown which means you could orb walk uh, perfectly with it as opposed to now where he has to wait three seconds and it doesn't sound like a lot but it is you know it's pretty annoying and Dagwolf hey he has gone for point crack and shell looks like what I'm saying is actually reaching him on the bottom lane well no just illuminates flying through top lane actually having a little bit of trouble we have phantom lancer going for the complete wrong build warlock going for a 1-1-1 one, 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 so you can't really fault him on that so far dark series going for a correct uh, skill build as is the next assassin, but I just want to ch talk a little bit about this uh, Phantom Lancer skill build. I'm willing to bet upwards of two dollars. That's right, upwards of two dollars that this guy saw someone play Phantom Lancer. He saw friggin' Loda or Black or someone play Phantom Lancer, or he's using one of these guide things up here, and he goes, "Hey, okay." So the build that they went in this game is Spirit Lance, Juxtapose, Spirit Lance, Juxtapose. That must be the build that I go for. That is completely wrong. If you are playing a Phantom Lancer in a pub game, like 9 times out of 10, your your allies aren't going to know what's going on. And I mean, clearly these guys are just purely auto-attacking, so they clearly don't know what's going on. So you want to get Doppelwalk. It is an invisibility spell. I don't know why anyone would ever not want to get an invisibility spell. I feel like no matter what, you would at least want one, because it probably will save your ass at some point but yeah this guy definitely just copied the build and copying builds from pros is not what you want to do because then you end up in a situation where well I mean he's out of mana anyway so I guess the fact that he doesn't have doppelwalk is kind of a moot point but juxtapose is extremely useless early on if you are a new player you really really need that doppelwalk because there are going to be ganks Maybe, maybe not. First night time hits and instantly EJ Morales goes down for the third time. Yeah, the third time. Gonna go for them power treads. She'd see, if she had a one point in meld, she would probably still be alive. Because it's an invisibility spell and it's pretty useful to have. Uh, but yeah, that is, my, uh, that is my rant on how people follow skill builds blindly and they don't understand what is going on with their skill builds. He's gonna get a third point in Lance right now, I bet. Oh no, he's actually gonna go for a doppelwalk. It's a little bit late for that, but uh, yeah, there's no reason to take two points in juxtapose, then go back into Doppelwalk, at least at this stage in the game. It's mid lane. We do have the level 7s on both heroes. Viper, uh, so far leading the gold per minute chart with a blistering 223 against this Tidehunter, who's really not having that great a time. Actually, surprisingly, the Warlock has the least gold per minute. Only has two last hits. The Templar Assassin did get a kill, I think. She was involved in something, but now she's involved in nothing. She's AFK? GFK. Top lane's still you know, they're fighting each other, but no one's actually going to die because he has that point in top walk. Going to survive. Well done by that PL. But yeah, she's just uh, chilling just a little bit. She's going to return back to the lane immediately. But the rock says, already level 5, has gone for 3 points in chakra magic. That is a little bit overkill. I mean, the Night Stalker only has 312 mana, and you're storing more than half of that. So don't really think that's absolutely necessary. One more point in Illuminate would have definitely done a lot more, but, he, and, but he's just like pushing the wave. He doesn't really give a crap, so uh, to be fair, I guess it doesn't really matter. But I guess the additional point in Illuminate, since you know that the TA isn't going to be using Refraction, would actually help them just a little bit more. Uh, there's been a lot of auto-attacking on both these sides, really, so yeah, clearly it's not the uh, highest skill level of game. Tidehunter is still sticking on this mid lane, going for now two points in Kraken Shell, two points in Anchor Smash. He's really not getting much done in this mid lane. And if you're in this situation, and especially if you're a Tidehunter going against a Viper, that's a lineup that, that's a matchup that you're not going to win without some heavy support from your allies. Then just leave. What? <laughs> Dagwolf. Dagwolf, I didn't. You don't watch a Tidehunter randomly expecting him to pop a Ravage, let me tell you that. But, uh, it's the. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Tagwolf, why? What was that, man? 
There was no one near you. There were no creeps near you. Top lane. Actually, someone's going to go down. I actually missed that. Shadow word from the Warlock. Putting the screws to the next assassin. In the meantime, mid lane. We have the Night Stalker. He wants blood on Dagwolf. Bet you wish you had your Ravage. Actually, Hel no, don't do that, Night Stalker. Just anchor smash him and he dies. No, no. Is he said going to take a dip in the tower. That's going to be the death of the Night Stalker. In the meantime, bottom lane. The Rock says, know your roll once again. And TA goes down. For some reason, Jerasonic is still in here. And now we have a surge from the Dark Seer. He's going to get body blocked by his creeps because going around for that surge, it really actually wouldn't have made a difference. It's only level 1 surge anyway. So, Jerasonic is going to get away from that one. But so far, yeah, this game is definitely full of, uh, you know, TI5 hopefuls, you know, for sure. J, J Vinces Vincesso, you know, sitting around at no HP. He does have a uh, you know three points of shadow word, so he could recover from that lack of HP relatively quickly. But now he's completely out of mana, and of course they have the double ring of Basilius build. If you have one ring of Basilius in the lane, it is already more than enough because you know both their auras are actually on. Ooh, wow, actually PL, Jersonic living by the skin of his beard as the PL, and he's gonna get out of there alive. But hell, he's not gonna go back. He has a ring of. Damn it! What is going on in this bottom lane? Holy crap! I mean, Chizu apparently isn't the best player, but we already knew that. I mean, we already have Morales just leaving. Is he just, just going to take a Illuminate straight to the face? I think that is what's going to happen. No! <laughs> Sucks to be you. Okay, here we go. Big plays from the TA. Putting up with that refraction. Level 4 TA ganking. Not doing anything to the Viper. I mean, he has 4 tangos. He's going to be just fine. Bet Dagwolf wishes he had a Ravage. And, uh... Turning around a little bit too late, taking, what, three, four tower shots, and here comes the Night Stalker. He's pissed. He's going to go straight for this Night Stalker, for this uh, Tidehunter with his double damage rune. The Viper hitting for the slow on the high ground. That's going to be a very easy kill for the ti for the Night Stalker, who's actually, you know, despite his early game shenaniganry, seems to know kind of what's going on. I mean, he knows that he has to be aggressive. He knows that he's a very scary hero on the map at this point in time, so he has to make good on that. Jersonic, what are you doing, bro? Oh, he knows that... He, Subata playing the bait, and now Second Nautical is actually gonna die to this tower. Well, he's gonna get hit onto Jersonic Second Nautical. No, don't do it. Oh. Subata, help your buddy. He's AFK. And in the meantime, mid lane dies again. Morales, what you doing, bro? He has the power treads. Actually, that's that's pretty impressive. This guy knows that you can make power treads out of this. I mean, it's not a widely advertised fact, but okay, here we go. Subata, he's. Well, that didn't do anything. Fatal Bonds, you need something around him. Okay, yeah, that didn't do anything either. I think uh, J. Vincesco is actually dying faster. Here comes the... It was a bait the entire time. Honicide is going to avenge the death of his fallen Darks here. He's going to take a couple lances uh, in return. But Night Stalker coming in with yet another double damage rune. It's got no bottle. Doesn't care. Just pop those runes straight into your mouth. Why save them for later? Might want to earn charge right here. And there you go. He wants more blood. Jersonic is completely out of mana, so the Night Stalker could probably kill him once again, but yeah, so far this game has been all sorts of sad, but yeah, the power treads, you could actually make power treads out of the, uh, all the, oh, wait, we should probably get rid of that first, oh, there we go, Tsubata definitely, uh, has disconnected from this game right now, but you can actually make power treads out of these three items, and EJ Morales is going to drop once again, you can see that on screen, but it's not really a widely advertised fact, like if you click power treads, it says belt of strength, so, and most of the time, power treads are recommended, so if you click on it, it's like, oh, belt of strength. But, you know, if you actually click on these, you could get power treads out of these items. It really doesn't make a difference. You want to make it out of the belt of giant strength, like, 9 times out of 10. Actually, like, 95 times out of 100. Actually, 98 times out of 100. Like, there's really never a reason you would want to do anything else. Chisu, gonna run, get stunned by the mana leak. He does have a walrus punch, but it looks like Honicide gonna do a little bit too... Oh, he wasted the urn charge. Tower shots are a bitch. And he still doesn't have any meld, by the way. I'm really hating on this TA, but seriously. Oh, Jersonic. There you go. One lance. Easy kill. Night Stalker ran the wrong way. Everyone was rotating downward. And, oh, actually, they want kills. The Rock says... I mean, he's been 3-0-3 uh, for the longest time. And now PL looking to make a stop to that. There's the PL's right behind you, Rock. Probably move. And, oh, here we go. Dagwolf. Let's see if he can hit a Ravage this time. Just Gush and Anchor Smash. That's the kill. Gush... Anchors. Okay, I guess you don't even have to anchor smash, I guess. I mean, yeah, he wants to give the kill to his friendly PL. That is the correct thing to do, technically. And I don't know, Doc, what are you doing, bro? 
I mean, so far I'm like mildly impressed by this Viper play. He's Radiant hasn't made too many mistakes. He's been pressuring the lane at the correct times. He's even getting so gonna get a solo kill on this warlock. But Ancients, not right now. Not his Viper. There you go. Just auto cast it. Okay, alright, that doesn't really matter. Warlock screwed. No point in using the Shadow Word, just accept your fate. His Viper Strike is insane. And Viper is gonna hit the level 12 mark. Look at this Viper, man. I mean, he is all up on the charts. He's on the top, and on the other side, there's the Phantom Lancer, who actually hasn't died. That's kind of peculiar. You would expect him to die at least once because he was running at level 1 Doppelwalk for so long against a lane that could have easily killed him. Speaking of easily killing him, we have Chizu once again gonna take a death on this top lane. That's a uh, 0-3 versus the 1-6 from uh, EJ Morales, who I'm assuming uh, they're buddies because, you know, noobs who play together die together. But here we go, TA. This is the build that you want to go for all of your games, man. I mean, you don't need meld. That It's actually, I mean, minus armor. Armor isn't really that important in this game. Jurisonic going to run straight into Homicide. Homicide. And he's going to make it out. Unless, unless Dagwolf is the one who's going to be fighting. I think the Tidehunter could actually turn around. Oh, not with the Rocks. As Rocks has actually picked up Boots of Travel. He had Tranquil Boots a little bit ago, but he's going to ditch that. And there we go. Ravage onto two, just so he can make his escape. And it looks like he might not even do that. Lance up onto the Rocks, says. But, oh, you don't want to be there, PL. You do not want to be there. Oh, oh he's going to get it with the Illusion. That Illusion, man. You know, I'm wrong. Doppelwalk. No, that wasn't Doppelwalk. That was just a Spirit Lance. Yeah, the juxtapose didn't do anything there, so it was pretty useless anyway. But the Ravage, giving Dagwolf an assist. But yeah, let's talk about this TA build. Uh, you want to get your ultimate, like, on most heroes. Even if you don't know what your hero does, even if you haven't read any of the skills, going with your ultimate is always a safe bet. I mean, it's pretty, it's going to be pretty, oh wow. That was impressive right there. Let's see if he runs into it. Oh, of course he's going to run into it. Run, Zubata. You can actually turn around and just kill him. Yeah, there you go. Oh, the ice shards. No, run. Chisu's coming. Oh, uh, snowball won't be enough. It will be enough, actually. That's a high-level snowball. That's a maxed-out snowball. Impale can hit onto Chisu, and the rock says, gonna lay the smack down. And excess and finds the kill there. Okay, so I think that I found the correct game. I looked for a pretty long time to find a game that I would think, I thought, I would think was gonna be amusing. You know, I didn't want it to be like a 10-minute stomp fest, and I mean, those aren't fun. Who wants to watch those? Who wants to be a part of those? I found a good game with uh, a good amount of skill and a good amount of lack of skill. And speaking of which, don't know how The Rock got behind G J Vincesco like that, but he's going to take a mana leak straight to the face and don't stop running. He's now out of mana to cast the Chaotic Offering and well, The Rock says he's going to channel one more Illuminate perfectly on the mark. This Keeper, man. He's probably going to get the kill because there's no teleportation support. In the meantime, the mid lane Doc is on the run from a very, very scary PL who rushed Vlad's number one build right there. Honestide right on his tail. Going to miss the nuke. But the Rock says, actually, going to get the kill? No, just hit him like twice. Come on, man. Oh, is he going to get it anyway? That was right on the edge, but hell, Keeper of the Light claims blood either way. This guy, pretty much as fearsome uh, as his friendly Night Stalker. I mean, just as, if not more fearsome. He's going to run straight into Jarasonic, but he's going to teleport away. This Keeper Delight knows what's up. I got to say, I think the individual skill level on the uh, Radiant, definitely a lot higher than on the Dire. Like, the Rock says has been landing Illuminates after Illuminate, and the Viper seems to know what he's doing. He hasn't taken a death yet, and oh, Jarasonic. He doesn't have a point in, he doesn't have an available point in Doppelwalk because, you know, it's a 30 second cooldown, man. Can't afford to just be throwing those out willy-nilly. By the way, Arcane Boots, Vlad's Robe of the Magi. I don't know what this guy thinks his main attribute is, but you can see the little golden circle right there. That's actually an agility. Uh, it's an agility hero, and oh, wait a minute. Dagwolf gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doc. I think uh, Doc should win this. Just pop the Viper Strike, although yeah, Dagwolf better run. I don't know why he was holding the Viper Strike. It was a tactical decision. And uh, Okay, Treads Yasha? Is that what that is? Or Misclick? <laughs> he wanted really, really high amounts of power treads. But this is just mana overkill on the PL. First of all, uh, on the PL, you don't want to go for arcane boots because that is just way too much mana. If you manage your mana correctly, then you don't really need that. Although, I guess if you're going to keep Doppelwalk at level 1 and you really want to spam that out, even though you want to keep it at level 1, then uh, arc boots are going to be pretty good. Robo the Magi, I'm assuming, is going to turn into a Diffusal Blade, but he actually stopped for Vladimir's Offering, which is a pretty awful item on PL. 
at least uh, this early on. Later on, it could be useful, but it's always better to have your support get. He's going to go straight in for the rock, says invisibility is the bane of pretty much every single pub game ever. It really doesn't matter what level of pub you're playing at. If you have invisibility, you're going to be annoying. Ice ball, here we go. Going to go straight onto the Night Stalker. Walls dropped. Don't need to vacuum in because everyone's going to walk through it voluntarily. And it's a bloodbath. The Radiant are going to clean up the Dire. Jarrah Sonic going to die to a straight illusion. Now Dagwolf going to fight amongst himself. And that's going to be four down, five down as Jay Vincesco going to take a Viper Strike. That's a triple kill for Subata. Why are you even bothering with that vacuum when you could just put up a wall and have everyone voluntarily walk through it? You know, normally, if I was the Starkseer, I wouldn't have a point of wall and the fight would have probably gone a lot differently. But, hell, he's, he knows what's up because he may not know what his ultimate does, but he got it anyway. Unlike this TA who's going to max out Psyblades, which is, I mean, you, I guess you could kind of see the merit of Psyblades. It's like, hey, I'll be safer. A Subata, you better not die here, man. Oh my god, you lucky bastard. And here we go, Psychonautical taking the Ice Shard so that nothing else happens to him. But here we go, Ice Ball in. It's going to go straight for the Night Stalker. Walrus Punch, not going to be enough. And Tusk going to drop. Jay Vincesco has his ult, wants to use it. Where is it? Drop the rock, drop the rock. He's going to drop the rock and it might kill off Honicide. It might, it, Phase Boots, Phase Boots is going to burn up. There's the Lance, it is going to kill off the Night Stalker. But in the meantime, Doc as well as Psychonautical putting the screws onto the TA. I mean, it's not that hard, TA's really really practiced at dying they're gonna go for dag wolf next although doc is afk what is with this radiant team and going afk he has a courier coming actually no that's the nick assassin who's going to go for the dagon yeah always go for it oh no courier okay courier's gonna escape and rock says jersonic you see one more spirit lance and it's gonna get the kill sniper as keeper of the light does go down and I guess, you know, I mean, if he didn't have all that mana regeneration, he wouldn't have been able to get that many scythes. Uh, not many, a scythe. He doesn't have a scythe. Oh, that would be pretty cool, if P a PL who just had, like, a scythe. I don't think that people would really like that, though. The community will flip their, sh flip their shit. But yeah, Vlad's not a really great item on PL, because as PL, first of all, the, the whole theme of PL, it's in the name. I mean, you're a phantom, and you have illusions, right? And nothing that the Vlad's does. Oh, here we go, snowball into Doc. I don't know if that was intentional that they uh, he brought the PL with him, but Doc actually going to turn right back to get hit by the Walrus Punch, and then he's just going to walk out of there. Although, we have a Gush coming. Gush from long range. Lance as well. Doc down to 100 movement speed. He's on the run. He doesn't really have anything to do besides cast the Viper Strike and walk around in circles. What was that, Doc? Man, I talked you up so much, and now you just got to go and do that. That's disappointing. Here we go, though. PL as... Uh, not PL. Well, actually, yes, PL is in danger. It's like an article on the hunt, though. He's not going to really find many people. He's going to find the tide. I don't think he's tanky enough. He's a. Uh, I don't think he can kill the Dagwolf, even though Dagwolf going for the no boots build. I mean, classic Dagwolf. I mean, you know, every single time you see Dagwolf in these games. Actually, oh, that was just a regular sound. I thought that was an Orchid for some reason. Mana burn. Impale. There you go. Psychonautical. Finding the kill. As a tide hunter, you want to buy boots. Let's do a quick boot check, actually. Make sure everyone has boots. I mean, hell, even even the TA has boots, Dagwolf. Rushing for the Refresher Orb. I mean, Refresher Orb Tide is glorious, but it's not that glorious. Phase, Travels, Power Treads, Arc Boots, and Arc Boots. Okay, the Radiant should win this game. And if they don't, it's going to be a little bit sad. Jay Vincesco. I don't know why I'm saying Vincesco when it's just Jay Vincesco. I think it just sounds better. Uh, they're going to find the Warlock on the top lane and actually wow look at this sentry wards on the keeper of the light the rock says definitely know what's up knows what's up and i don't think there's been a single uh ward purchase on the other oh wow there is sentry wards chisu gonna wish he had those sentry wards right about now illuminate just gonna stop short and chisu might actually get away from this the sigil really helping out there especially since the night stalker turns around just put an urn charge on him and he's done or you just run forward for the nuke, waste a little bit more mana. Jarrah Sonic is going to get all leaked out because of that mana leak, which is now like level 3, level 4. Impale is going to kill the Phantom Lancer and his dominating streak as well. And the Radiant are actually should be able to break the Raxes. I mean, the Dire 2 have some pretty damn good team fight. Much better than the Radiant, actually. Uh, they just drop a rock on someone, have a Ravage, level 2 Ravage, that is, on top of that. And they should be able to make some hurt happen. There you go. Rock has been dropped, but there's the vacuum onto Jay Vincesso. Viper Strike onto the Warlock Golem. They're just definitely going to bring that down. This might actually be the end of the Raxes. Focus the Raxes, guys. Focus them Raxes. 
Oh my god, look at that. TA picking up a point of meld. He's gonna get hit hard by the horses though. And it's actually gonna be early Rax. Maybe this game isn't gonna be as long as I thought it was gonna be. Rax is already down and well they have four up, but they're just refusing to actually get in there. Kinda makes sense, they can't really do that. They have the wall to deal with. And hell man, that wall is actually, you know, really dangerous. Actually we have a twenty minute mech on the darks here, not too bad. Considering he was AFK for a good chunk of that. But now they're gonna dive the base. This is a little bit too over aggressive, I gotta say. Wall is up, no vacuum needed, although, walk right through it, PL gonna walk through it a couple times. No, honestly, I wanted to take a couple of tier 4s. Chisu, what are you doing, bro? You have the sigil, but it's only level 1, it's not gonna keep you that safe. And I think it's now time for the Radiant to back up, because their top lane is being pushed. They could go for a tier 2 on the bottom, but I think they're instead gonna take a snowball to the face. No walrus punch needed. Dagwolf gonna wander his way in as slowly as possible, and look at the side blade damage from EJ Morales, 284. Doing the hurt. Now Doc is on the run as well. PL already claimed one kill. Two down so far. Ice Shards perfectly on the mark. Beautiful play by this Tusk. Although you really you just have to click the Ice Shards on the hero and then they get hit. Now the Viper going to go down as well. Look at that. We have ourselves a game. 30-16 to 16, but the Dyer is still kicking. 2100 gold. Is he going to get a Blink Dagger? Oh my god. That would be amazing. Please Morales. Please get a Blink Dagger. Please do it. Oh my god, he had a blink dagger. Are you ready for the sickest shit you ever seen in your life? Are you ready for this? I mean, this guy knows what's up. He goes straight power treads blink dagger. And a 24 minute blink dagger? Considering he's died 9 times, that's actually very impressive. Like, he died so many times. But he still has enough gold, somehow, to get a blink dagger. I mean, the Radiant are getting crushed right now. No, no, no not the Radiant. The Dire are getting crushed, I'm sorry. He doesn't have his ultimate, but he has a Blink Dagger. Hell, I would expect like a 30-minute Blink Dagger, but I guess he's died in like, in like, kind of clumps, so he didn't lose that much gold at a time. Wow, this TA, impressing me with her farm. Not really impressing me with her skill choices, though. I mean, Psionic Traps, it's a slow. Even if you only use it once to slow down one person at a time, it's still worth it, <laughs> I think. I don't really know. I haven't done the math on that, but I'm pretty sure it's still worth it. Here we go. What is the Radiant going to do now? They're really setting the pace of this game. They definitely have to be wary of the team fight. Although, I mean, they have some pretty sick team fight. I mean, they have a wall and a vacuum, like, separately. They have those two skills that have no synergy with each other, at least in this game, because you don't actually have to vacuum them into the wall. I don't even know if Subata knows that he can do that. But he's been, like, dropping the walls, and everyone's just been walking through it. That's going to be a pain for the PL. Oh, here we go. DD on the Night Stalker. I've seen this episode before. Uh, Jarasonic, you gotta watch out, bro. Ah, uh, he's gonna get away. Right, I didn't finish talking about PL's last. Uh, the, the illusions don't get any of the auras. They, like, extend the aura range, but they don't actually benefit from them. And then at that point, it's just like a little bit of lifesteal for yourself. If you, want, if you really want lifesteal that badly, just get a morbid mask and then sell it later or something like that. So you could jungle or whatever, but he got points of juxtapose and... Oh, here we go. Jarasonic gonna crash the party. Roshan gonna get dropped. Who's gonna take the Aegis? Who's gonna get it? It's gonna be the Night Stalker Ice Ball coming on in. It's only Chisu inside. Gonna get a Walrus Punch. There's the Warlock Rock. Gonna drop onto everyone from the Dire. Dagwolf gonna wander himself in as slowly as possible. Ravage onto three. Psychonautical is gonna unleash his payload onto Jay Vincezzo. He is not gonna be able to get the kill. And it looks like the Radiant are actually getting cleaned up here because of that Roshan fight. Jay Vincezzo, run! Honestly, is right on your tail. Don't turn around, Night Stalker. Finish the deal. Earn charge or not. On the side, now completely surrounded by Dire. He's going to try to fight his way out, but he's going to try to focus the tankiest one, which is the Tide Hunter. He actually wants Jarasonic. Not going to get it. PL with the Diffusal Blade is doing some pretty high damage. Doc, though, he wants a piece. It's not over. You have Poison Attack. You have Viper Strike. Please cast one of them. Jarasonic. Oh, and Chizu. Come on, just land a Poison Attack on either one of them. Anyone. You could take them all three, actually. You can. Trust me. I play Viper. I've played Viper before. You can take all three of them, but Radiant's Looks like that's going to be it. Night Stalker dying even after the Aegis. I believe the Radiant did get the... I actually can't see. I, I'm pretty sure the Radiant got the Roshan. Uh, but yeah, the Dire. They have some pretty sick uh, sick team fight in. I believe this is the workings of a Refresher Orb. And I believe this is the workings of a Refresher Radiant's Orb as well. And instantly into the level 2 Diffusal Blade. This guy definitely saw some sort of pro game with this because you know usually you want to use the purge charges 
Not really many great things to purge, actually. I guess you could purge off your silence? I'm like 80% sure you could do that from the Night Stalker. You should be able to do that. But look at this, man. We have the Dire warding up. I don't know who got that. Pretty sure it was the Warlock. Who seems to know what he's doing as well. I mean, he's gotten picked off a couple times, but he's like dropping the ults when he should be. Uh, Tusk going to go for just general tankiness. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing to do when you're behind. Just brace her up. Although, they, yeah, I mean, just having a really tanky Tusk might not be too bad. The Rock says going to get demolished. You have a mech. Use it. They have two mechs, actually. Mech and mech. And he's not going to use the mech. Don't need it. He's going to run straight into Dag... Oh, here we go. The biggest of plays. Dagwolf. No, Dagwolf. What are you doing, Dagwolf? Oh, you walked right by them. He still doesn't have boots either. Oh, that is sad. And now Chizu going to get initiated upon by the Night Stalker. Put on your armlet. Wow, look at this. Night Stalker knows what's up. He's kind of forgetting that he has a uh, urn charge that he could do a little bit of extra damage with, but Tusk should be dead. Just needs one more tap. There you go. Hit the sigil as well. Get a little bit of gold from that. He's going to do it. Change his mind, but 110 gold. I mean, that's a lot of gold. Oh, here we go. No blink dagger, no problem. Oh, no, don't. No, the ion shell, no. Please, no. Oh, this is... Oh, no, no. You got to run. You got to run, Morales. No. Oh, he's on the run. He's on the run. Oh, that was <laughs> that was <laughs> that was kind of sad. Uh, okay, okay. Well, we we have two mechs on the radiant. Uh, I what's actually not that bad. I mean, mech is that's not yours. Okay, mech is an item that's actually like it's it's definitely a team item. But if you're all alone and you have a mech, I mean, it's a two hundred fifty kind of potion that you could just chug down. It's not like the worst item. Especially when you have a Dagon. I mean, Keeper of the Light is going to be able to kill people all by himself very, very easily. And now they're going to push the top lane. I mean, they already claimed the mid-raxes, and I guess they don't have to worry about the team fight. I mean, I don't know how the Tidehunter is still getting these Ravages off. How does he not have a Blink, not have a blink Dagger? But we have the TA with the Blink Dagger. Still level 11. No ultimate yet. Not in sight. Now the top lane is going to be pushed out. And that should be it. If they tire, don't even don't even bother. Just sit back and wait for them to take your tier threes. You cannot defend this dire. They're actually split pushing pretty hard. TP scrolls. Look at that. PL knows that he is the most important person on his team. He's 12, 4, and 3. Only 57 CS, but he's uh, he's not that stacked actually. Oh, here we go. Morales waiting. Oh no, he's got he got moved because of that vacuum. Morales has to fight to the death now. He's gonna go down. Ice Shard's gonna come in, as well as the wall. Psychonautical finds something funny. Honicide left alone by his team. Where did the team go? Ravage gonna hit onto two, and this Night Stalker just tanking everything. He's just gonna walk his way out of there, though. Armlet toggle, no, it's not gonna be in time. Where did the rest of them go? Oh, they're actually dealing with Jerasonic, who's completely tearing them all up. Viper gonna get uh, dropped first. Now Jerasonic gotta pop them arc boots and start throwing some more lances. There you go. Psychonautical gonna die. Now the Rock says. He's going to be on the run as well. That armor from the mech as well as the healing not going to help him. Jerasonic is pissed. He's going to get kill after kill after kill. It's almost a complete team wipe. Subata, last one to stay alive. That fatal bonds once again, literally doing nothing. And, uh, well, Chaotic Offering not used. Ravage just used on the Night Stalker. But really, this Phantom Lancer is finding, like, he doesn't have much farm. His item choices are kind of questionable. But you know what? He's finding these opportunities. He's playing real slippery. He's getting behind the opponents, going straight for the likes of Psychonautical, going for the Keeper of the Light, stuff like that, and really just putting the pressure on Viper. That's one way to deal with the Viper, because he'll do a lot of damage if he has a, uh, if he has enough time to actually hit you. No, I mean, obviously, not many heroes can say that they can do damage without hitting people. I guess, like, Necrolite is pretty much it, but... Uh, yeah, the Viper, if you pressure him, he's going to be forced to run, because he can't really stand up to this PL. He's going to have to be forced to run for positioning. And, well, at that point, you kind of need the wall to be there. Level 2 wall, by the way, which didn't do anything once again. They're going to take a tier 1 mid-tower. And, wow, the, the Dyer are actually still kicking in this game. Dagwolf still. Oh, he has enough money for his refresher orb, though. Maybe we're going to see the refresher orb 32 minutes into boots. Jarasonic, though, he's going for the Asha. He knows what's up. He's going for, right now, a good build, at least. Diffusal Blade. Uh, Diffusal Blade Manta. Not bad. Here we go. Dagwolf waiting for the big plays. If they only had a TA to initiate. But Morales still 
uh, is unwilling to participate with his team. I mean, once you become one, he has more CS than the PL. No, he doesn't. PL got a little bit more. Oh, here we go. Team fight. Keep your light going to get demolished in an instant. Ice Shard's coming in, not helping out Dagwolf, but here comes the Ice Ball. Chisu's going to go with Jer Sonic, actually, going to bring down Honicide. This is going to be a couple down. Wall gets dropped. Dagwolf might actually die to it in a 16 meter stray shot from Doc. This kills him off. Jer Sonic trying to go 1v3. Not going to be enough. Instantly buys back into the game, though. This PL. What he really needs right now is a heart. If he goes for that, I'm pretty sure he could just like A, move himself down the mid lane and win the game. But it's actually a 2 for 3 in the end. Not a bad trade for the Radiant. I mean, they do still have Raxes up. They're going to have to deal with a really, really stacked PL. And he's, he has 70, 17 kills. So, I mean, Jarsonic is a pretty large threat right now. What the Radiant can do is just, you know, find Morales every single time and just kill him. Because it's not really that hard. It's like an article now on the run. Going to waste an urn charge. He's going to take a lance straight to the backside. Doc, we need you, Doc. No, Doc. Don't, someone better micro this guy. Oh, no. Crossing the desert. You do not want to go that way. Where's the purge charge? Don't need no purge charge. He's now out of mana. Actually, second article is going to find enough time to get out of there. But Doc actually tanking up to escape. He has a point booster. And he has a vanguard. But the lances probably won't be enough, especially with Psychonautical going in there to body block him. Why you gotta be like that, Nick Sasson? There's gonna be the death of the Viper. Psychonautical is gonna pop his vendetta and get on out of there. This is a dire comeback, I gotta say. I mean, they were down by, what, like 16 kills? Now they're only down by like 10. I mean, they're coming back, man. Jersonic, they have a Cancer Lancer on their side, and, well, they haven't yet discovered the magic that is Chemo. However, now Jarsonic's gonna die. There's really no way he can escape this. Out of mana, out of hope. Boom, boom, boom. You're dead. But in the meantime, what the hell happened? What? What? He dropped out a while. What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Jay Vincesso. Psychonautical didn't actually go back to the base. He's gonna pick a fight with the Warlock. Oh, shit. Attack with your Golem. Attack with your Golem. There you go. He just wanted to get the last hit. This Warlock Golem was like, yeah, Master, go ahead. It's all you. I'll be back here if you need me. Oh, my God. Holy crap, it's a Psionic Trap. Okay, it's time for Morales to, you know, just bust out of the jungle. I am done farming and then kill everyone. Is he going to go for Haunicide? Oh, please go for Haunicide. I want to see it. See, he's now trapping up places. That's actually what you're supposed to be doing as TA. This guy's learned so much. It's so great. It's like... It's like all my children are growing up now. Oh my god, Tidehunter getting boots as well. Oh, it's such a pleasure to see my little babies all grown up now and ready to face against a stacked Night Stalker. And without the PL, I mean, they could go for the top Raxes, but instead they're going to go back right down the mid lane again. To what point in purpose, I have no idea, but uh, I guess they want to go straight for the GG. Mana Leak. No, Ice Shard's not going to slow him down. There's a slow. Rock says Mana Leak dagging him. Pew, pew, pew. There's the Ravage slowing him down. Rox is actually tanking a tier 4 tower. What kind of luck is that? Honicide, once again getting body blocked. Has the phase boost now. Chizu, gonna take a little bit of a siesta right before he escapes. Refresh orb, but he doesn't have enough mana because he doesn't have arc boots or anything. So you probably shouldn't have rushed that refresh orb. Now Jay Vincezzo on the run. He's gonna be saved by the Ice Shards. Secondary Ravage, not in time. But here comes the pissed off PL. He's gonna kill off this Night Stalker. Easy peasy. A little bit too over aggressive. From that NS, Doc has returned to this game. Still with one set of Raxes down, they have to deal with Jarosonic. And with no real uh, True Sight, they can't really do that. Oh, Son Psionic Traps doing work there. Jarosonic going to ninja his way around. Going to sit right into the middle of that Ion Shell. Doc could actually probably out-tank Jarosonic if he just sits right here and tanks him. But he's going to instead run away. Another Ice Ball going to come in onto Psychonautical. He should be fine to run away. Jarosonic... Is he's low on health, but he's a lot of mana. He's gonna get one more lance onto Doc. Doc's gonna go down in the meantime. Nick Sasson killing off the Nick's the uh, TA. What a surprise there, right? It's like an article now. Gonna go what 1v3. He doesn't give a crap. He's gonna pipe, pop spike carapace. Not really gonna do much. Subata gotta run out of there. Has his mech. We have two mechs, mind you. Well, uh, he can actually turn around if he just mechs, puts an ion shell on himself, and then you know tries to play a spacing right. But it's like an article instead. Gonna be on the run. Purge charge, spike carapace, don't use that. And everyone from the Radiant is dead. With the exception of Subata, who dropped his wall somewhere. I didn't really see it, but uh, did I see it? Was it right here? I don't remember. I don't remember, but it's 41 to 33. We have some damage coming up on the TA. We have general tankiness up on the Tusk. He can go for his Vanguard uh, if he wants to right now. The 
classic 37 minute vanguard we have the uh, the item switch from the warlock actually gonna go for the mech try to keep his ally alive as much as possible refresh orb can take a pause because we still have a refresh orb on the tide which he cannot cast just the two ravages alone he could barely cast but oh he has a blink dagger now there's no way in hell he's gonna be able to get two off he has no arcane boots and I don't even think there's any arcane boots on the team no there's not but it may not even matter because uh, we really need a cure for can for uh, for Lancer right now and well that's not coming the Radiant are really struggling against this PL who's just having the time of his life right now it's actually a remarkably close game just because all of the focus is on Jerisonic for the Radiant. He's going to go straight for the Rock Says. Probably not the best idea. You really need to create an army of illusions before you do shit like that. But he's going to... Ooh, just barely survive 50 HP. He's going to slip on out of there, actually. This guy, you cannot kill this guy. You can tell that the Radiant are frustrated also. I mean, they're, they're not frustrated enough to buy True Sight because no one really is ever that frustrated in such a low-level game. Oh, Psionic Traps. There you go. There you go, Brown. There you go. But uh, here we go. Dagon's up. Level 2, level 3. They could, like, nuke this guy down because he still doesn't have that much health. But instead, it's going to be a pretty good team fight. Oh, no. TA, blink. Blink away. Blink away. But here we go. Here we go. Big gank. Ice ball. Going to come in. Ravage after the blink. Refresh orb. Not even enough mana for that, actually. Going to get a punch onto Doc. But the PL just standing his ground. Going to go for Psychonautical first. Wall in the middle of nowhere. Refresher orb now is available, but doesn't have enough mana. Can use it instead for the gush. So far, it's a one for one trade. Night Soccer has gone down. They're going to all walk straight through the wall. That PL illusion. For the radiant side, gonna be huge, but Doc is actually on the run. They can turn around and kill off Jerisonic very easily. Ice shards, oh, actually gonna work against the Dire there. Now they're on the run once again. Lance is getting, oh no, Subada, not again, not again. You hate to see this kind of thing happen as Darks here uh, just s resigns himself to death. Jerisonic, he's gonna try to fight to the death. Dagon gonna miss, and Psychonautical, ooh, Psychonautical, he's out of mana. Kill the PL, kill him. Bring him down, bring him down, bring him down, and they do bring him down. The dominating streak has been ended. The tyrant is dead. But, uh, oh wow, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Darks here cleaning up. Look at this. I don't think even Jerisonic could win against this. Although, unless they all just dispel at the worst possible time because the wall ran out. That was kind of unfortunate, but... Yeah, those PLs, stolen by Blue, completely unintentionally. I mean, he vacuumed nothing into that wall, but... Hell, Jerisonic, not afraid of fighting up against himself. And, uh, well... Got to worry about some more Dagons. Really, the only thing. Oh, PL actually going for Sanjinyasha. And there it was saying that he knew what was up. Sanjinyasha actually isn't a bad item on PL. It's just. Uh, I mean, everything that it gives is what you want. But you could get everything that it gives. Because you're getting so much farm in the PL, you could get the health through the heart. And you could get the uh, agility, damage y stuff from the Mantis style. And since you pretty much have unlimited gold as PL, like, over the long term, you don't really have to go for these intermediate, kind of, basic items. You can afford to sit back, wait it out, wait till you get your money for the Reaver, wait till you get your Mantis style, and then just get so much more bang for your buck than just a Sanjinyasha. Uh, he can still get a Halberd, Manta, or he can dissemble this and get a Mantis. Uh, really, it's the Manta that you want, so you could, you know, maybe pop out of that, uh, pop out of that Mana Leak. I think you could pop out of the Mana Leak. And, uh, you know, just try to go for... Try to get an Illusion Army up. That's a little bit quicker. They're going to go straight for the Roshan. Let's see if the Dire team... Actually, they're starting to mount a comeback. There's over a 10k gold advantage. Less than the 5k experience advantage for the Radiant. I mean, they're ahead because they have Raxes. They took it so early. They're actually not completely in the clear yet. They're going to have to worry about this double life on Jerisonic. And they could barely kill him once. But they know... Oh, they you know. Here we go. Illuminate's being charged up. Night Stalker going to run straight in, but there's a Ravage. There's a Warlock Golem on the other end. Illuminate's going to fly through. Wall is up. Perfect wall placement so that when everyone leaves, they'll walk through it. Jay Vincenzo on the run. Just drop your ultimate. Dag will looking for a Ravage. Going to find it. Onto two. Everyone else is on the high ground. So, Bada, you got to get yourself down there and fight, man. You have an Ion Shell. Use it, for God's sake. The wall actually perfectly out of position to hit anything. The Warlock Golems get dropped. Going to beat down the Nyx Assassin first, but Chisu can get a amount of damage from Doc. He wants to kill on this Tuscar, but everyone Everyone else on his team is on the run. He's better be on the run as well. And the wall, if it was just like one pixel or like this much to the left, it would have been perfect because everyone would have walked through that. Uh, vacuum or not. Just, uh, wait, where did the Aegis go? Oh, Tidehunter took the Aegis. I mean, you got to get those Ravages off. He has a Ravage now, but he doesn't have enough for a Blink Ravage. He actually has some pretty good mana regen just because Refresh Orb does give a lot of mana regen. No one really remembers that. Oh, Vacuum onto Jay Vincenzo. Rock says, Mana Leak. Mana Leak Dagon. Or just, or, or just nothing. 
All right, so the Dire right back in this game, despite the fact that the gold advantage does look like that. I don't know how uh, Morales... Oh my god, he's desolated. Wow. This guy's actually farming up Storm. He's kind of dying every single fight, but he's been also avoiding fights, so... He's not doing too badly, gotta say. And now the Phantom Lancer. I mean, I think he might be powerful enough to just, like, 1v5 the entire team. Not when he's silenced like that, although we can just stand back and let the Juxtapose do its magic. Kind of not getting much of anything, though. He's gonna drop... Does Silence actually shut down Juxtapose? I didn't think that was the case. No, 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 it was the miss chance. 40% chance to miss is a bitch. I don't think this PL is going to know to get MKB anytime soon. But now the PL down, he does not have buyback because he spent it willy-nilly before. Doesn't have enough money, doesn't even have it on cooldown, actually. This could be the Radiance chance to run in and do some uh, GG push. Honicide, I actually do like this pickup. Going to go for the Maelstrom. Uh, it's not exactly the best item to go for the Night Stalker. You generally want to be uh, you know, more tanky, more on the front lines, as opposed to a damage dealer. But when you have a PL on the other end and no AoE, you have to go for something like that. Now, EJ Morales setting a trap. He's going to run straight past him, Honicide. They already took down one Tier 4, actually. Illuminate going to fly through, hit really hard onto this TA, as well as the Tusk. But now the Tier 4 tower is in danger. Not going to break the Melt to do damage. He's instead going to break the Melt to Suicide. TA with the big plays. One tier 4 tower, a uh, secondary tier 4 tower gonna go down, and now the Ancient is in trouble. Where's the response? Wall is up. GG is being called by Honicide with the BMGG. They have a Blink Ravage, they have no Warlock Ult. There's the Blink Ravage onto everyone, but it's not enough. Psychonautical is going to be brought down at least. He should be. Please tell me. Yes, you will. The Tidehunter does go down. He does have an Aegis, but he's gonna return to what end? Anchor Smash and then run. Really, you cannot hope for anything else. The Ancient is being focused down. This is going to be a really close game, although not really. The Radiant take the victory. Wow. This game was actually a fantastic game. Like, I'm not going to lie. This is like the power of Cancer Lancer right here in this game. And I mean, he doesn't have any teammates, but you don't really need teammates. Let's see if they got anything good out of this, but wow. What a game. What a game. <sighs> That was that was something. If you are watching this and you are in this game, don't take anything I said too personally. I mean, it's all for lulls. Anything for the lulls. But if you enjoyed this game, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, yeah. If you didn't, then let me know why. Other than that, uh, let me know what you guys want to see. I actually need some YouTube, whatever channel art for my channel, but I'm not. I'm actually not capable of doing that. So if anyone wants to make something, pretty much anything. I'll put it up there for a little while. So that's going to be it, guys. Thank you for watching. GG. GG!